Dear friends, please find your seats. Let's start our last session. We have two more papers today and one more film to watch. It has, it has been quite a movie day. Our next speaker comes from, actually we should say, from the same building. Our next speaker is well known to all of you. She's Kayla Hoffville, who is uh, at the moment working uh, for the most Museum Museum Canada and has given already some presentation at Body Heritage Network uh, conferences and summer schools, but that's a uh, debut in our first learning community here. As you know, she's an Estonian Canadian born in Toronto. Uh, she studied history at the University of Toronto, where uh, she got the BH, um, um, a bachelor, bachelor degree, and obtained uh, uh, her Ontario graduate certificate in arts and administration and cultural management at Humber College. She has international experience in art and culture, working in Venice during the Biennale. She earned her master's degree. Uh, in Arts and Heritage, Policy Management and Education at Maastricht University and as part of her degree worked in Tallinn at Obama Museum of Occupation and Freedom in 2018. Kayla has worked as an archivist and research associate at Ben Western Museum of Canada since 2020 and she is actually one of the key persons for that exhibit we can see here. Kayla, thanks for yours. Specifically, the editions in 1944. 
24. So I'm looking at nine uh, separate editions uh, published between October 28th and December 23rd of 1944. In the first edition of Teatlaya, the paper had a list of useful Swedish words to learn, information on quarantine times, planning for the community, and a section listing those who had arrived in Sweden from Estonia. Um, this was formatted as an article, so it, this wasn't precisely the classified ads that I've been talking about. Um, but the article listed people sorted, uh, sorted by profession, for example, writers, doctors, artists, fishermen, teachers. Um, there were actual classified advertisements, though, in this uh, edition as well, who were searching for loved ones. Um, so there were only four in this first edition of the newspaper. Uh, Eric West from Hapsalo was looking for a Rudolf Lintz and his family. Linda Rikma was searching for her husband, Roman. Uh, Lex Som was informing relatives where he was living, and a TL was looking for news about a Victor S. Reading through these ads, I frequently used the Estonian Institute of Historical Memory and Refugee database. No fools, right? Um, to cross-reference those who sent in the advertisements as well as the people they were searching for. According to the database, a bust arrived in Sweden in uh, September, uh, September 9th of 1944 and lived there for the rest of his life. The Lintz family, however, was not in the database. Uh, Linda Rikma arrived in, in Sweden in September 11th, 1944 and um, she lived there until her death in 1995. Her husband, Roman, was not listed in the database. I found an Alo Amike Bess and a Vidya Magnus Godle Bess in the database with their father listed as Victor, um, but Victor himself was not entered in the database. So it appears every specific person being searched for in the first edition of Diakaya uh, did not make it out of esteem or did not make it to where they were trying to go. And that is quite reflective of what happened. Generally, people were torn apart and oftentimes for the rest of their lives. Uh, compared to the four classifieds in the first edition, searching for friends and family, the second edition of Gatlea included 123 of these ads. So the number of ads per edition for the rest of the year were over 100, and the last edition of the year published December 23rd, uh, 1944, had over 200 classified uh, advertisement messages. Although at that time of year, many of course were sending in Christmas messages, um, but by writing and publishing these Christmas messages, the writers were still simply letting others know that they were safe. Uh, which is why I ended up including them in my totals and graphs. Uh, this means that in 1944, in the newspaper of Yap, there was a total of 1,318 classified advertisements published with the aim of con uh, connecting with lost loved ones. Within these uh, 1,318 ads, there were over 2,200 writers. A number of ads were posted by multiple people as a group, uh, usually from the same DP, DP camp, which is certainly a great way to organize for my purposes, um, but also creating one's own community within their DP, DP camp, strengthening ties with people they fled with, and perhaps as DPs in a new country, it was a way to avoid extra costs. Uh, each advertisement cost eight I think I'm saying that right, uh, per word. In the first two editions of the Diatlaya, all the writers of the ads were searching from within Sweden. By the third edition, someone had written an ad published in Diatlaya from Finland, looking to find out about her sister's fate. By the seventh edition, people were writing in from Germany, searching for others uh, and announcing their safety. People most certainly looked for loved ones through other avenues, such as the Red Cross, uh, but publishing an ad in different newspapers was also just a quick way to take action. And finding out their fate uh, was a mission to undertake across borders, um, as 
hands with the mayhem of getting to safety from AC, who knew which boats were taken and to where. Uh, planned escape routes fell through and quick decisions had to be made in the moment. Um, I was interested in noting the relationship between the searchers and the searchees. Um, there were over 100 different labels or relations listed that people used in these ads, ranging from partner to niece to priest to high school friend. Uh, these three examples are searching for uh, Heino and Yining's brother, who not use as mother and father, and Bayuna. Uh, life as niece. Looking through the relations that were clearly stated, 40 people were looking for their husbands while 39 searched for their wives. And there were 27 people looking for their daughters and 36 for their sons. 11 people stated just generally that they were looking for their children. Um, and then they would get more general as well as the labels. There were over 700 ads simply stating that they were looking for relatives. Over 250 using the word omakset, or their own, their own folk, perhaps. Um, and over 1,000 used the word buttawat, uh, or acquaintances. People were searching for everyone and anyone who could provide comfort in the tumultuous times. Some of my favorite labels that I noted had to do with waduma neyud, or maidens from the homeland. Um, these ads were presented in different ways. Three people were looking for their family, acquaintances, and added uh, to their classified. Um, they were looking for tutfus, neidubeka, or girls interested in dating. Two searched for relatives, acquaintances, and kiriya vahetus, koduma neidubeka, or correspondence with girls from the homeland. Um, 11 searched for relatives, acquaintances, and girls from the homeland, no correspondence. Uh, 14 looked for maidens from the homeland and nothing more. And 3 searched for abiendos primeros or girls who were thinking about marriage. Um, but one of my personal favorites was searching for correspondence with Jutablapsid, the girls, and Lepusad Leskit, Mary Widows. Um, 11 people signed on to that specific search. Um, and why not? People were alone in a foreign country in DP camps. Why not think about meeting someone and building your own family? Um, I think thus far I've been focusing on my fun numbers. Uh, of course, reading through these classifieds, I came across many names that I recognized from the Estonian Canadian community. In the November 18th, 1944 edition of Yatvaya, for example, um, I came across brothers Jan and Hendrik Eichenbaum, who were searching for relatives and acquaintances. Jan and Hendrik both ended up in Canada, and um, yes, they both ended up in Canada, clearly, <laughs> and were active members of the community. Yes, they they built their families here. <laughs> You'd call dating in Estonia. She ended up leaving on a troop ship, like a departing German troop ship, and she was in Gaisling. And she saw that ad. She wrote to my father. And then they walk us to the Yama head this time. And then her and her sister and my grandmother went to England after the DP camps were dispersed. My father showed up. They had a whirlwind two week romance, ended up engaged, and they eventually got married. She went to Sweden. And from there they came to Canada. So she did the full booking with the yeah. ring face. So, anyway. That's the kind of story I'd like to hear from these ads. Um, I was just going to add as well, uh, oh, simply just about Jan and Henrik. Jan was a longtime volunteer and supporter of the Estonian Children's Summer Camp uh, Sevioro, and Henrik wrote many works, including poetry and children's stories, in Estonian. Um, Edvard Martin wrote to inform readers of his location in Sweden in the second edition of the Apaya. 
Edgar moved on from Sweden to Canada and was a leading figure in the community as the principal of the Toronto Estonian schools uh, for decades. He, or his dedication and work in the Toronto Estonian schools can be further examined downstairs. Uh, Edgar Martin's archives are here in the Bevel Collections. Uh, December 9, 1944, there was an ad in informing readers that Dr. Johan Dork, an academic from Dagfu, uh, along with his family, uh, were safe in Germany. Uh, Dork's impact on Estonian education, both in the country and in exile, uh, can once again be further investigated in the Bevel Archives, uh, in his <coughs> extensive personal archives. And then also came across Pedro Sermat. Uh, he immigrated to Canada in the 1950s and studied psychology, deeply immersed in the arts, himself a writer, and uh, or, yeah, awarded the Order of Estonia in 2001. And then, of course, I found Arvid Irla. It was included in one of the advertisements placed in Gathaya by a group, uh, appearing in the paper December 16th. He arrived in Canada uh, in the 1950s, having first gone through the United Kingdom, and uh, he was a well-known Estonian writer in exile, uh, with his works having also been translated to English, and it is in fact possible to find his works in the Bevel Library. Um, it's apparently impossible for me to discuss this topic without speaking about my grandparents. Um, the reason that the Apta newspaper first caught my eye in the first place was because I spotted an ad written by my grandfather and his family, and my grandmother, and a friend. Um, my grandfather's family basically took my grandmother in. Um, my grandmother's mother and brother perished in the Tallinn bombings in March of 1944, and she at that point had no idea if her father was still alive. Uh, he had gone to Finland uh, to fight there. Um, and so she left any extended family, any family she had behind in ASD when she left uh, with the Barambu uh, family and Bahu and many others on the same boat. Um, putting out an advertisement in this group uh, shows me the beginnings of her making a new family. Um, her father was in fact still alive um, and they reconnected in Sweden um, and she and my grandfather married shortly afterwards in Sweden and along with the newlyweds, her father and the Barangu family, they all moved to Canada, their new family unit. Um, Yes, and of course I must mention that my grandparents were a part of Dina Pierce's memoir, memoir Writers Club, um, and stories of their lives and their own words can be found in the group's publications of Melo Dunglad, also available in the Family Library. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, I'm looking to expand reading more about these advertisements to 1945 and different publications because my initial urge, um, I suppose, in seeing all these sort of missed, <laughs> really missed connections or people trying to find such important people in their lives, my initial urge was to see if any of the searchers and searches overlapped um, between different classifieds and different papers. Um, but it would also be interesting to see if or how the messages change over time, uh, any shifts in the keywords or labels, and just how many men will continue to look for some homeland ladies. Um, the classifieds, though, reflect the chaos and the loss of loved ones, the deep stress of not knowing their fates, um, but they're also reflective of resilience and people were posting these advertisements in search of lost loved ones, but they were also doing so in a newspaper specifically aimed for their community, made by their community, um, and promoting their culture. They were doing so in groups, creating a new version of a family unit within the DP camps, and connecting with others with shared experience, um, and laying down the roots of the Estonia diaspora communities that exist to this day. I 
believe I'm giving Edmund some extra time, but I'm finished now. <laughs> We have a couple of minutes for questions or comments, if you have any. Marika first. Gayla, how easy is it to access this newspaper in the archives? Has it been digitized or can yes. you go and visit yes. it? I can share them with you. Excellent ads to demo collections. Please visit us more often. <laughs> 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 